Good morning or good afternoon. Hey guys, and welcome back for a quick lab exploration day. Uh, I'm just going to give you a very brief video to sort of go over a couple of the things that you guys are going to be doing in the lab. I uh, just want to go over them to make sure you guys understand the expectations and also make sure you understand the general premise behind a vaccine before we dive in. So the last couple of times we've been talking about uh, diseases and we've been talking about how your body fights them off with immune systems. So how do we actually bolster immunity using vaccines? So vaccines are the process that we use to um, battle against pathogens, mostly viruses. Uh, vaccine allows us to be able to um, start to build up those memory B cells and those plasma cells in your body um, to help you to be able to fight off the disease. Okay, so vaccination, what is it in general? So we can see here, this is the video you'll be watching for number one, what is the vaccine? And I want us to take us back to uh, this graphic right here to understand what a vaccine is. So if you guys remember, when we have a pathogen invade the body, a pathogen is just a, a deadly cell or a, a disease-causing cell that comes in and starts to damage or take over our cellular machinery, like a virus or uh, a bacteria or something. So when a pathogen enters, that pathogen has certain uh, receptors on the surface of its membrane. And those receptors are what it allows, uh, what allows it to bind onto our cells and go inside. So you can think of these receptors uh, that are like the key to being let into uh, the door to our cells. And so those are what's really dangerous about allowing those viruses in. And that's really where your body starts to recognize and defend against viruses. Because once they're inside the door, your body can still employ some defenses to try to destroy them. But once they're inside the cell, it's, uh, it's far more likely that they're going to actually be able to do their damage. So stopping them from getting into the cell, that is the first big ticket item. And it all comes down to those receptors. So we call those receptors antigens. So we can see these are pathogens right here, these little pill-shaped things. These might be bacterial pathogens. And they have these little circles on the outside, and those are antigens. So the antigens are going to be those little keys that are going to try to unlock the door to our cells. Our cells have receptors on them that will accept these antigens. Why? Is it because our cells are like, yeah, we want viruses? No. It's because these viral antigens or these surface protein receptors are mimicking the ones that our cells would normally accept and think, oh, everything is fine. So I can let them in. So that's what these are. Uh, and these are going to bind onto those receptors. Now, um, when we start that first phase of nonspecific immune response, <clears throat> and we have those big macrophages come in, remember those cells that come in to eat these pathogens, a macrophage is going to come in and go, nom, 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 and eat this pathogen. And when it does, it's going to display this pathogen's specific antigens on its receptor surface. So basically, it's going to take these receptor proteins and put it on its own membrane. And when it does that, uh, these T e cells are going to come in, and they have these uh, specific receptors that are going to lock on to the macrophage, and they're going to say, okay, let me see what you got. And I, I like to think of about macrophages as almost being like dogs or something. It's like, what do you have, boy? What would you get for me? And the macrophage is like, you know, it brings up the, it brings up the, uh, the antigen that's like, I brought this for you. And so the TH cell is like, oh, I see. So that's what I'm looking for. Good boy. And the macrophage is like, <laughs> you know, and goes off and does macrophage things. But anyway, so um, the TH cell or the helper T cell now has an idea of what kind of pathogen is invading the body. Uh, it's going to go through to all of the different types of B cells that there are. So B cells are like the defensive cells, right? Um, so these guys are almost like the messenger, and they're going to take that information of what they're trying to fight over to uh, these B cells, and then they're going to activate the B cells that have the proper antibody receptor that can bind onto the pathogen. And so they're going to be like, okay, you have a round receptor, you're good to go, activating B cells. And the B cells will differentiate into plasma cells and into memory B cells. The plasma cells will start releasing antibodies that will help to destroy the, uh, the um, pathogens as they're coming in uh, by bonding onto their antigen receptors and marking them for death. And then the memory B cells are going to stick around just in case these same pathogens happen to come back. So what is a vaccine? So, okay, let's think about something really quick. Um, if you think about the structure of, we'll say, a virus, and I'm sorry, my drawing's probably going to suck here because I'm doing it on the laptop. 
So we have, uh, we have our virus. A virus is essentially a protein capsid, which is what we call this. It's like a, um, a little protein shell. And coming off of that protein shell is going to be our antigens. So here are our antigens right here, those little circular receptors that it's going to try to use to bind onto our cells. Okay, so we have all these antigens on the outside. And then on the inside of the virus or bacteria, it kind of works the same way regardless, on the inside of the bacteria or virus is its genetic information. Now it can be single-stranded or double-stranded. In this case, I'll show it's single-stranded but it's a nucleic acid like DNA or RNA. Uh, and this nucleic acid is the really dangerous part of a virus. If you think about it, it makes sense. Okay, so when a virus comes in and it binds onto the surface of your cell uh, using one of those receptors, so here's your cell receptor, and it's gonna come right in and bind onto that. When it does that to try to get into the cell, the receptor that it's using, these little antigens, these are not the actual danger. The danger is what's inside, because once this guy is inside the cell, once it's able to uh, actually be able to go inside, uh, so I guess I'll show it going doo -doo 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 -doo, inside like this, once it's actually able to go inside, that's when it starts to become dangerous, because this piece right here releases its uh, nucleic acid, and it's the nucleic acid that actually goes into your cell and starts to do the dirty work of producing more viruses. Right, so this is the dangerous part of the virus. I'm circling in red. This, ugh, that's supposed to be a circle. That's a terrible circle. Excuse me, hang on. This is the dangerous part, okay? So danger. Uh, I'll try to write that. I don't know if I can. Okay, so, but your body doesn't use uh, this as its first line of defense. It doesn't say, okay, so there's uh, nucleic acid unidentified in the cell. That's when I'm going to start putting up my defenses. It puts up its defenses right here. So the cell can actually detect whether or not the thing that's bound to it is more likely to be a virus or the thing it was supposed to be binding to. And if the cell is suspicious at all, it starts to send signals throughout its uh, core. Whoops. It starts to send signals throughout its core to start to activate ah, viral defenses. <clears throat> so um, the cell is not completely clueless, and it will try to destroy the virus before the virus is allowed inside. But the cell bases its entire defense response upon these antigens, because if you think about it, these antigens, these are like the identifying features of this virus, right? We might be able to say these are its ID cards or its ID badges. So your body starts here. And when the body is trying to figure out how to destroy uh, the virus, it's not going to try to immediately um, target the DNA or the RNA because this is the easier target. If it can figure out it can just destroy everything that has this ID marker, it doesn't need to specifically destroy the DNA, it can destroy everything, right, uh, and stop it from even getting inside your cells. So what are vaccines? So there's a couple of different things we could do to make a vaccine. The first thing that we do to make a vaccine is we cut off some of these little antigens uh, and we go ahead and we mix them up into a solution. So we have like a bunch of these little antigens inside of a solution and we inject them into a person. And that uh, the person's body goes ahead and it detects these antigens and it starts to make the necessary T and B cells and the macrophages and all that. So um, we can infect them with just this. And obviously, the surface proteins can't reproduce themselves. So because there's no genetic information, this vaccine won't be dangerous to the person at all. It'll just um, cause them to build up an immune response. And the other thing that we can do is we can insert this whole virus into a totally different type of organism. And by doing that, we can, um, we can make it evolve to accommodate itself to that organism and then bring it back to people. Sometimes this can weaken the virus's ability to be able to even infect ourselves, and that's what we call attenuation. Um, it's an attenuated virus. Or we can kill the virus with heat, denature its proteins, and then recycle these uh, viral uh, capsid uh, proteins, these little antigens, and insert them directly again into somebody so that that's the only thing that they're receiving. But the important thing to note is that we're not putting a live virus on someone. Now, there are live virus vaccines. Uh, those are fairly rare, and those are for very extreme cases where in order to confer an immune response, sometimes we just have to um, 
expose the patient to the disease. But that, again, is only in extreme and very special cases, and those cases are, are very highly regulated. Um, it's not something that we're going to do uh, in mass or just to everyone. Um, also, uh, another cool thing that we can do is if we know uh, the DNA code of the virus, we can actually figure out what part of the DNA code makes these little receptor proteins. Uh, and we can actually uh, take that code. So let's say that this, uh, this little uh, antigen marker, these little antigen proteins, let's say that they're coded for um, by the code, go ahead and put it down here, uh, AATACG. Well, if that's the case, if they're coded for by that particular type of uh, DNA sequence, then what we can do is we can actually, uh, we can have uh, a machine artificially make that sequence using uh, nucleotides and all that stuff, and we can actually artificially mass produce the little protein antigens, and then once again, we can insert the antigens into somebody's body to elicit the immune response. So it's pretty cool. We can uh, do all sorts of things to weaken, destroy, or inactivate uh, viruses so that we can put their proteins into our body and uh, react to them. That's all a vaccine is. It's really just trying to build up those plasma and memory B cells uh, by placing the body with the necessary antigens that match to the virus. I hope that makes sense. Uh, I hope that sort of piqued your interest, and I really hope you um, enjoy or if not enjoy, find the uh, exploration I've got planned for you really interesting. There is some cool stuff in there that uh, I actually learned some stuff um, when I was going through it. So it's pretty neat to look into. I hope you enjoy it. Uh, and I look forward to seeing you guys again for another lesson this week. All right, guys. Take care. Stay safe and well.